Listen, I don't think that there are conspiracies afoot. I, I know what it's like to be... Oh, what's the word we should use at this point? I know what it's like to be... To, I know what it's like to understand stuff, right? I, I don't understand everything, but if I've understood Brexit... Um, I don't have understood anything. I, I know what it's like to understand how bad things are and how significant it was yesterday when Rishi Sunak accidentally admitted that being in the European Union is the best available scenario for any part of the United Kingdom. And I said to you yesterday, I don't expect to see that big in the right-wing media. Probably only The Guardian would report it. Guess what? Proved right again. But it, it's not a plan. The Daily Telegraph don't respond to Rishi Sunak's epic clangor yesterday by going, "Oh, let's run that, um, let's run that uh, story about uh, Matt Hancock's WhatsApp messages to distract attention from the fact that Rishi Sunak accidentally told the truth about Brexit yesterday." They don't do that. You know, the Daily Mail just will run with something completely different. Just ignore what was, by some distance, the most significant development in the world of British politics yesterday. The Daily Mail will put, police, we, we fear that their baby has come to harm on the front page. A big story, a heartbreaking story that has absolutely nothing to do with the major political events of the day before. And also on their front page, and this is where I'm going to direct your attention in a moment. Uh, I, 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 it's very important to remember what the Daily Mail is and what the Daily Mail has done to this country over the last few years, mostly under the editorship of a man called Paul Dacre, who's expecting to be put in the House of Lords by a man called Boris Johnson. Just bear that in mind. There's also reports in this week's Private Eye that the current editor, a man called Ted Verity, is expecting to get a knighthood from a man called Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, the same man who yesterday saw all of his lies and deceptions about the so-called oven-ready deal that would allegedly get Brexit done fall apart like a cheap suit. But that doesn't matter. He's still entitled to a resignation honours list. And the man who presided over the most disgusting episode in the history of British newspapers, with the possible exception of phone hacking, is set to get a seat in the House of Lords, while his successor is reportedly looking at a knighthood, which explains why they maintain their sycophantic approach to Boris Johnson, despite the fact that the rest of the world is slowly waking up to what an absolute charlatan he is. So this is the newspaper that went after High Court judges for having the audacity to both understand and enact the law. Enemies of the people is a phrase that is associated with the rise of the Nazis in 1930s Germany. Enemies of the people, a front page headline, so gross, so vicious, so dangerous that in a vaguely normal country, the man responsible for it would have been drummed out of the establishment, never mind uh, elevated to the House of Lords. Enemies of the people and then crush the saboteurs. The MPs who have now been proved categorically correct about everything were desperate to prevent Boris Johnson from leaving the European Union without any deal at all or even perhaps resisting calls for a second. Crush the saboteurs. It's under Theresa May, I think, that that headline appeared. The idea that people who understood stuff shouldn't be able to exercise their democratic right in the House of Commons to vote according to things that they actually understood. And if you think that's an exaggeration, have a look back at the votes for the withdrawal agreement. All the people who spent yesterday talking about what a bang-up job Rishi Sunak had done were, not that long ago, talking about what a bang-up job Boris Johnson had done by bringing in the deal that Rishi Sunak had to undo. This isn't normal, and it's not fair. It's not fair on ordinary people people. It's not fair on businesses. It's not fair on farmers. It's not fair on doctors and nurses who have to deal with epic staff shortages. It's not fair on anybody who relies upon labour to keep their businesses afloat. It's not fair upon people already hit hard by the cost of living crisis who are having layer upon layer upon layer of extra and unnecessary expense inflicted upon their lives. It is not fair upon people whose families have been torn apart by the racist lies of elements of the vote leave or the or the Leave.eu or the UKIP movement. It's not fair that liars managed to grab our country by the windpipe and squeeze it until the flow of oxygen to the brain had been sufficiently cut off to deliver a referendum result that we will be ruining and regretting for generations to come. So, yes, it was significant yesterday. It was significant yesterday that Rishi Sunak accidentally let the cat out of the bag. But it was not profound. It doesn't change anything. You're not going to get liars suddenly repenting of their lies and repudiating the madness they inflicted on the nation.